Audio Sound. This is Bjorn Jacobson speaking, and this is a video series about how to do AAA sized projects in WISE. Welcome back to the second video here in the series. We are about to create a AAA WISE project from scratch, where we will try to make it very clear how a AAA WISE project might be structured in terms of bus structure, asset structure, naming conventions, and so on, and a lot of technical stuff. And right now we are only at the very beginning of it. So we're only just getting a project overview, taking a look at what's going to happen, and maybe make some take some precautions in regards to what kind of events do we need and so on. The plan is that we have no game to hook this up to. That's not because there is no game. That is simply because we are prematurely hooked into a project where we cannot hook things up. So we are trying to get ahead of the pack and create a wise project where we can later hopefully just tap in and it'll work straight up. So what I usually like to do is to over here in my event, create a work unit that I will call test events. In test events, I will create simple events called play underscore test beep and play underscore test beep loop play underscore test beep 3D. Now, what we need is that if we also create assets for these, we will be able to, whenever we have anything in the game that needs to know where does the hook work, this, we have an animation that triggers something, and instead of having it trigger something random where it might clutter, clog our soundscape later in the, in the process, we can now have it trigger simple beeps so that we know that that hook works. Then we can replace it with the event that we need. The event that we need can also be empty. It's simply just to hook it up to the right event because then we can take that event, point it at a random container that has no content in it, but that means that we can mark it with a color code, which is very smart, and then work from there, all right? In my actor mixer hierarchy, I will create a work unit called test files. In test files, I will import two files. You will get this pop-up about where to place things. We will get to that, but never place anything in the original's SFX folder. That's quite important. It's very important that you keep a very strict hierarchy of where things are. And in this case, I will be creating a folder. We can take a look at my originals folder afterwards. I will be creating a folder for test beeps only. I will be creating one for UI and subfolders for everything that we need so that we can easier backtrack what this is and where things are. Now that we've imported the two files, check a look at this. This just this file to here just beeps, and this one is three seconds long. The three second long file, you can ask it to loop it and just for infinite reasons so that we can have a start and stop sound. So actually over here for our test beep loop, we need one that is called play test beep loop stop. Now there's a bit of a different opinions on how we name stop events. Some like to name them stop here, and some like to name them play, and then stop test beat, and not have stop here at the end. I prefer to have them all name something with play, because when something is triggered, it plays this event, and this plays a stop thing in Wise. It's a little confusing, but it can make sense and it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you do it either way. It's just that you do this consistently across your project. So play, stop, test, beep, loop, let's call it that. So play, test, beep, loop, we drag and drop our file there into this event. So if we play the event, it just simply loops this file forever until we hit the stop event. Test, beep, loop, there you go. Test beep. We need a test beep that is also placed 3D in the world. So we can just rename this one and make a test beep 3D version. We should also do that with the loop. How we're going to do that is that we will probably, we will take these two, shift alt A to create a new actor mixer because then we can, we can just call it 3D test files. Because then we can set our attenuation on this top mixer instead of having to deal with it on both files. So we now have a test beep 3D, which should point to this file here. We have a regular test beep, which points to this file. We have the test beep loop, which is called test beep loop 3D. And this one, step the stop event for that. So test beep loop there. This is the 3D version. 
And this here is the stop event. Just mark it as a stop event here. Test beep loop, test beep loop here as well. Place this and our stop event for the test beep loop needs to be pointing at our regular version here. Stop, there we go. And now we have events for all these. So test beep loop 3D, test beep loop, test beep 3D, and test beep normal. Save the project. In our regular files here, we need to establish what attenuation do we need. And a really smart way of starting your project is to simply create a bunch of generic ones. So under share sets, if we go to attenuations, we create a work unit that we will call ATT underscore generic. All ATT stands for attenuation. So all attenuations start with the word ATT. In that way that you know in your naming convention and so on, this is where they belong and this is what they do. Don't be afraid of having thousands of unique attenuations. Don't create custom ones and don't loop or do lose or reuse or anything like that. Create the ones that you need and keep them as generic and low scale as, pro as possible and then create new ones as you progress into the project. So let's say here, attenuation generic, a really smart way is to simply say ATT generic underscore 10 meters. Let's double click it. As you can see now, this is a screenshot that I took. This one is 10 meters, but then you simply just copy them over like this, generic 10 meters. We make one that is called 20, 50, 100, 200, 500. If you do this where it's 25, 50, 100, I don't care. It's as long as you have these generic ones. So let's double click the 100 one and you can see it here on the screenshot. We set our max distance to 100 and equivalent, you set these to 200, 500, and so on. The reason why we have these is that whenever you need to test the sound, you will always be able to use the generic one instead of having to create one. Because I've seen a number of soft projects, and including my own in the past, where I would create attenuations for footsteps 10 meters, but I also had a wind 10 meters and other things, and I don't need that to begin with. Now that we have set those up, we can over in our test files over here and say that under positioning, we need this to be 3D spatulized. And what attenuation should it be using? We will probably be saying the 51 that way. The reason why you want to keep a as low as possible amount of attenuations, not as in low that you can't have as many as you want, but if you can stick to, say, all dialogue be using the same attenuation for distance, and then only, of course, Specific situations can have a, um, a unique one. But if they all use the same, your world will become more structured. Your video game world will sound more alike and natural if everything seems to be coming from the same place. If you have one character that you can hear 500 meters away, but another one can only be heard 100 meters away, it will seem unnatural. Another set of test events or that we need is that we will start to be creating events that we know that we will need, but we cannot use right now. And we know that we will be needing player locomotion. So I've created a work unit called player locomotion. So under events, we already have one here that's called locomotion, but we also have one that's called player. Under player, we could have one that is called player locomotion because we will probably need a custom one for NPCs and so on. Under player locomotion, let's say that we have an empty event that is called play underscore player footsteps. The reason why we have it this way is because I'm planning to have a structured switch event or switch container that can be controlled by only this one event, so that this one event will trigger literally everything that we need. Now. Since we don't have a game, we can tell our programmer to start by whenever he's able to do so, whenever a footstep is supposed to play, play the test beep event, because that's what we want him to know, that whenever he plays this, the hook works. So then he can check, does this work in accordance to his how his logic is? And we can then tell him, just replace it with the name play player footsteps. If he does so, then when I'm ready, it will work. Now, because we are ahead of the pack here, it'll probably work when we get there. 
over here in our audio hierarchy under player footsteps, we can make, let's say, just an actor mixer here that we will call, we can just call it player footsteps underscore. Let's just, just, just for the sake of the example, we'll call it player footsteps dirt. We can hook this one up here. Now, this one isn't ready, so let's color code this up here in our palette and say it's not ready. And that way we can know that all these files are ready. So imagine if we have all these here, which is just, this is just for the sake of the example, if we have water and gravel, etc. As these become more and more finished, these may be switch containers or whatever, as these become more and more finished, you can mark them as green. This simply allows you to understand, is the asset ready or is the asset not ready? You can also use the color codes for more higher level. So instead of being, is this ready or is this not? You can say that all player content is blue. And then when you get to the asset files, let's say you have a very deep structure of switches, then you can say, are they green or are they red? But they could be everything player related could be blue. Everything NPC related could be purple, whatever. And that's a really smart way of setting up your WISE project so that everything is ready. Everything will have a color code, just like with your naming convention, set up a color code convention so that you know which color points to what so that you can start using this and make a test beep. One of the really smart things that I've also seen is to simply record your voice saying one, two, three, four, or whatever, and then hook that up to a switch container so that you can always test distance when something is triggering. Thank you for watching this Kujo Sound video on how to do AAA size projects in WISE. If you like this video, why not hit the thumbs up or maybe even subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel and all the time that I take off to create all this content, consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel. I would really, really appreciate it. Hopefully I'll see you again in another video or check out some of the other videos on the channel. It's a lot of game audio stuff. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next time.